All right, live on video, stand by for audio. Good day, good evening, and happy new year, 2019 listeners. Welcome back to another of the Fuel Show. So that's right, as usual, we're, we're just rocking the mics on the weekends because we just know how to balance life that way. And <laughs> I've got, yes, yet another new guest co-host for you. And this is her first time, so let's take it easy on her ahead of time. But let's jump right into it. Real quick, I want to remind you guys, this is a free show, like most podcasts, and I am not annoying you with annoying commercials. So please, if you can, if you've learned something powerful on this show, remember to share it. Remember to get people to subscribe. And heck, throw me a review once in a while so that way I can re read your reviews and I, you can give me feedback and improve this show for you, the listener. So that aside, let's get into it. We're getting healthy today, okay? We might even get your house healthy today. And our new guest co-host, she helps health-conscious families optimize their home for wellness, if you haven't picked up on the hint here, all right? We all need more healthy homes. And people spend thousands, I'm guilty of this, thousands of dollars on organic food and raw juices and boutique fitness and uh, maybe not cloth diapers for me, but teach their own. And then they have no idea that there are so many health risks that exist right in their own homes. And I'm guilty of this. I've had to dig in. I read the labels. I'm looking for the chemicals. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. It's kind of overwhelming. She's going to help you guys out today because, again, she's a healthy house strategist, real estate investor, building biology student, concerned wife and mother, and she enjoys working as a health coach for people's homes. So without further ado, Courtney Lebedzinski, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm excited to be your co-host. Excited to be here. I love it. It's like, hey, there's a lot of podcasts out there, and I'm still been told that my format with you being a guest co-host is still very weird for a lot of people because most people are getting interviewed. So for you getting your first podcast appearance ever, you're coming out strong because you're a co-host. I know. I'm so <laughs> excited. And as long as your guests don't mind this co-host possibly hyperventilating during the interview, then we should be fine. <laughs> Well, it, I'm sure my regular subscribers will be like, ah, Scott will take it easy on there. It's going to be okay. It's gonna be awesome. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I, so I'm going to dive right in. Uh, I, why did you become such a healthy house nut? Was it kids related or did this happen before you know, starting to build a family? Yeah, good question. So um, I've been investing in real estate for several years. So I was always kind of interested in housing. And then I'm also like a member, a, a card carrying member of the Crunchy Moms Club. And I'm sorry, so, what? you know, Crunchy the Moms Crunchy what? Moms Club. <laughs> so we, uh, <laughs> you know, we try to do things the more natural way. And so I'm always thinking about how we can do things without chemicals and, you know, in the more, in the most natural way possible. Okay. And I stumbled upon this field called building biology, had never heard of it before. And it is the study of how our built environment or our homes and our buildings, our workspaces influence human health. And as soon as I discovered this, I was absolutely hooked. I mean, I could not learn enough. Okay, hold on. How did you just stumble across building biology? I mean, was this you know, like offered at a local community college or? No, no, not at all. I think it was just digging through websites. I was, I, I don't even know. I just am an avid learner. And yeah. I think I started digging down the trails of building science, which is kind of how like the, the engineering of our houses works and, and heard a podcast with the building biologist on it. And I was like, me, 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 I need to know more. And so um, I'm currently studying to become a building biologist. But in the meantime, I'm sharing everything that I'm learning um, with people at wholesomehouses.com. That's awesome. So wait, so hold on. Becoming a building biologist, is this like legitimate curriculum that exists somewhere online? Is it a very niche thing since you're part of this crunchy mom's club? That sounds very niche. Uh, <laughs> it is. Like, what, is this a secret society of building biologists? Like, <laughs> there is a secret handshake. Can't show your listeners that. Oh, come but... on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is. It's a little bit new here. So it started in Germany. It's much more popular there. It's kind of making its way to the States. Um, but as we see more and more people getting sick with unexplained illnesses, we're looking for different solutions. And the thing is, is that Americans spend 90% of their lives indoors, 30% of their lives in their bedroom alone. So for us to think that our houses have no implication on our health is just silly, in my opinion. Okay, so I got to ask you, first off, for the video watchers, I'm going to do. I'm gonna jump in some screen sharing real quick. So for the listeners, uh, if this is just enticing you already, make sure you go check out her site, wholesomehousesplural.com. 
But then right off the bat, I just Googled it real quick. Is this what you're studying through, the Institute of Building Biology and Sustainability? Yeah, so this is the one, uh, this is the one not for the United States. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time this saying which one pulled up. Yeah. yeah. But um, the United States has its own, but we're all affiliated and it's all basically the same information. It's just okay. the certifying body is different in the States than it is in Well, it's places. funny because I just Googled building biology. I've never Googled this before. And it's like, <laughs> here we go. Building biology is a field of building science investigating the indoor living environment for a variety of irritants. Practitioners study how the environment of residential and commercial and public buildings can affect the health of the occupants, producing a restful or stressful environment. Yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia people. So, there you go. <laughs> and the thing is, is we build our houses and when, we, or when we're looking for a house, right? What are you looking for? You're looking at the cost per square foot. Does it have granite? Uh, you know, like you're looking at very superficial Is it open things. concept? Uh, right. Trust me, we, we watch, <laughs> right. Uh, my fiance said we, we watch all of those, I don't know, building, flipping, investing, redesign, yes. remodel shows. We love it. It's great. So, so I, I do can, too. I can meet with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I tell you what, this is very Joanna Gaines inspired behind me. And I love her show. Is but that, the thing is, that's, the thing is, that is that, well, this is, this is faux ship lap, but it, it, it's the same idea. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> but the thing is, is, you know, even these beautiful Joanna Gaines approved houses oftentimes have very dangerous things hidden hidden behind the walls that you would never think of. So well, if you watch um, the show, I mean, all of a sudden when you open a wall up, I mean, I, I, I can attest this. I live an hour and a half from New York city, an hour North of Philadelphia. I'm in one of the oldest neighbors around here. Ours was, I think the first or second house ever built. And I, we, I think we've estimated it at 1912. So you can imagine wow. what I had inside of my walls. So, oh my <laughs> goodness. Right. Asbest wow. Asbestos wrapped uh, ductwork. Yeah. You know, yeah, of course. Old, old school uh, forms of insulation that may not pass code today. Uh, I still have old wiring that I'm still trying to get out of this place. So, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's crazy. So typically, it, it's interesting because things have changed. So some of these things, you know, lead-based paint or whatever, we're getting away from. But sometimes, when you go to an older home, you're better off. So. Things like your windows, typically, even though they're not as energy efficient, they're letting in more full spectrum light than the oh, windows yes. that we have now. They're not dipped in fungicides. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're not dipped in fungicides like our windows are now. So there's, you know, there's it's hit and miss with the age. Wait, hold on. You never hold know. On. We got to pause on that. There's some of the newer windows have fungicides. Oh yeah, yeah. So really, that yeah, yeah. So if you have a wood window, they standard building practice is it's dipped in fungicide first to, to prevent it from molding out because it's wood, which is perfect mold food. Well, and I can tell so, you, we have the original windows still. These are, I have the antique rope pulleys still in the frame. We have this beautiful, oh, wow. beautiful uh, slat diamond format over the upper part of the window. So the first floor ones, most of the rope pulleys are pretty much shot, but our second floor, they're like in mint condition. So we, we keep talking about, well, do we update it? Do we not? Do I care? Because I'm going to flip this into a rental property anyway. So I was okay, like, yeah. I, 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 like, I like you though, because I study blue light spectrums and I've learned through other podcasters on my show that uh, we've, a lot of these newer multi-pane glass technology is filtering out some of that healthy solar rays and you're not getting that. So absolutely. Yeah. Healthy UV. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of how I stumbled into it. The other interesting thing about my backstory is my husband is in the air force. And so between us being stationed different places and us being kind of crazy and buying houses for investment purposes, we've lived in eight houses in the last eight years. So, um, so I have watched military families. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. But it's given me a very unique perspective in terms of like actually paying attention to my body and my symptomology. Like when I would move from one place to another, I would notice rashes clear up or I have a, a weird sleep kind of nightmare thing that happens in some houses and not in others. And so I really had this perspective of, wow, like where I live is truly affecting my well-being. And um, again, so that's why I just, as soon as I discovered building biology, just could not learn enough. And I've 
got to team up with some incredible mentors, including Dr. Jack Cruz, who I know has been on your show. Oh, yeah. um, and, and I've learned a lot and I'm just sharing that information with everybody. He is still the most, no one's crushed his downloads. He has been downloaded really? more than any other person on this show's history. So that's a smart guy. He is. And I, I have you, um, you feel Matt Maruka? He's like his like protege. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, raw, raw optics. optics. Yeah, so I'm still waiting for my raw optics because I got my Swanix and I've got my eye loves <laughs> and I've got like I literally have four pairs of blue blue blocking glasses laying right here. So I might that's have awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and the cool thing, Dr. Cruz is doing amazing stuff, and the thing that I really respect about his work, it 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 can be tedious, I guess, for some people to read through some of his blog posts. It's a lot. It's heavy on the science. It's can make your I, eyes I, I kind of coached him on that. I mean, I, I even mentioned that before we, and I was a new, po I was a newer podcaster. He was episode 51 and now I'm approaching wow. 250. And wow. um, it's funny because he is so intelligent. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, for people who are newer listeners, like he's a neurosurgeon. I mean, the guy works on brain health and yeah. he has so much knowledge to share. It just spews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to some newbie people, it could be so overwhelming. And it takes people like yourself, myself, Matt Maruka, to kind of filter that down and, and get it more approachable, I think. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And I was lucky enough to get invited out to his longevity center and his, his home out in Louisiana. And the guy is walking the talk. That's the most exciting exciting thing to me. I have seen things in his house that I've only heard in theory. I've only read in books. I've never actually seen anybody. Ooh, does he have the, the, does he have a special switch wired up? So if you try to go into his bedroom, it shuts all the electric down around the bedroom. He does. So that's Damn, called a kill switch. I haven't done that. I know. Me too. Me too. I, I've got to go downstairs. Because I've, I've already, I mean, I've talked about <laughs> on the show. I've, uh, I used to have all my Wi-Fi and internet stuff in this office. And then I had, once I had him on, then I went and bought special power strips so I had a separate you know, on off switch right here at the desk. So before we went to bed, I flipped everything off. And then, cause like, yeah. why do you need the internet and, while you're sleeping? Yep. And I, yep. I back him up. My sleep shifted completely. And I was already a decent sleeper, but I don't have like, if I forget to turn that off, I have weird dreams. <laughs> so it's, yes. yeah, right? So then, I mean, since then though, I've now, um, we have a laundry closet. I've installed this nice shelving, ran all kinds of high-end, power in there. I have a backup power system. I've got all kinds of stuff, but that I've actually hardwired the whole house with cat five awesome. internet. Like what you said. Very to. good. Yeah. There, there is still a Wi-Fi router because I do push internet out to my, uh, my garage behind the house. But yeah. again, everything's on an off switch. So again, when I'm done with it, turn everything down uh, before you go to bed. So, and I hope that your listeners will at least consider trying this. You don't need Wi-Fi while you're sleeping. So no, give it like a try just, or two. Because no one thinks about turning off the switch. It's just exactly. like, well, okay, well, then make it easier. Like I, I was like, okay, let me make it easier. I'll put a nice big fat power strip that has an on-off switch. And usually most yeah. power strips, the on-off switch lights up. So if you got it in a closet like I did, you just open the closet. I see the little switch and I just turn it off. I mean, yeah. you don't yeah. have to take it to that level. You could just grab the back of the router and turn it off. So. Yeah. Or you can get like the Christmas light timers and you can set it to go yeah. off at 11 PM every night and Look then at you. you don't have to think about it at all. So, you are a yeah. house hacker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a simple one. And they're super cheap on Amazon. You can program them for different days of the week. So if you plan to stay up and you know, Netflix and chill or whatever for longer on the weekends, then you can set it to turn off whatever time well, you want. How day. long ago were you guys bouncing around from house to house? That whole oh, eight, so eight we've, years. we've lived in this eight place hours. for three weeks. So we're continuing <laughs> to bounce from house to house. <laughs> well, so let me ask you this because I, I, I will pause a little on the investing side because I do get a geek out of that because I do want to build yeah. a portfolio on that side too. Uh, because I've already, this house is my fiance's great grandmother's house. Like the family's very successful oh construction company was founded in the garage behind my house. So wow. I, have, I have more square footage in my garage than I have my house. It's awesome. Are you serious? <laughs> I have a 3,000 square foot garage. Oh my gosh. Total man zone now. It's taken me yes. three years. No doubt. No oh, doubt. <laughs> but I've got, I've got that. I got everything monetized. Like, so anyway, in the 80s, they split this house and put a second floor, I mean, not a second floor, but they turned that into an apartment. So for years, both these floors were rented out just as it was just sitting in the family estate and they just monetized it that way. And yeah. then my fiance is like, well, I'm ready to have my own home. I want to buy that. And she gutted the first floor, read the mm -hmm. first floor, but only to a certain point. 
So anyway, yeah. since then, we, we have, we've got a tenant upstairs. I've got two different people storing very nice cars in my garage. So I've got that monetized. So that's why our next house, I'm like, we're going to flip this first floor into a high-end rental. And then the whole property is rented. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But to your and point, there's a lot of things until you get into property management, you don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that how you started geeking out about it because you got into investing, or was it was it because of the moving around? I think that it. I think that I again, it was. It sort of feels a bit like a fluke, and I'm sorry, it makes a terrible story for your listeners. But I stumbled upon it, and it just things started clicking. Like you know, I had this skin condition in that house, and oh my gosh, I haven't had that in two years. I didn't even was it something really like a psoriasis type thing, or it was uh, the like chicken skin. What's it called? Keratosis. Polaris yeah, there's a certain scaling and then like peeling. Yeah. Peeling. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I contribute it to the water. But the, the bigger thing for me is I have these things called hypnagogic hallucinations, which is the craziest synthesis of being so awake. That three times. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like being um, in a dream and awake at the same time. So your eyes can be open, but you will see like a big octopus man like in your room. It's insane. But um, I really so it believe like I you lived, were tripping out. <laughs> I, it doesn't it? It sounds like I was on drugs. But in actuality, I slept on the other side of a smart meter next. Uh, I, I can't even. Oh, that's right. so Very, very close to a cell phone tower. I didn't even think about the smart meters because yeah. everybody's electric meter on the side of your house, they added on the wireless transmitters because they're too lazy to get out of their car and go up and read your electric meter. They just want to drive by and just exactly. scan all the homes and pick it all up. I forgot exactly. about that. Yeah, well, and the interesting thing, so many interesting things, here's one interesting thing about that. Um, in theory, that's fine. Okay, we're too lazy to get out of the car, then we'll come by and we'll ping it once a month and check what it is, or, or we'll send the data once a day. But yeah. in reality, if you take a meter to one of those things, these things are broadcasting usually every five to seven seconds, just through yeah. your whole house, but boom, ba boom, boom. And people think because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, it's not affecting you. But our bodies are electromagnetic in nature. And so to bombard yourself with that constantly all day long, especially when you're trying to sleep, I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster. So this is why I started doing this stuff with the Wi-Fi router, because again, I've never had an issue sleeping, but my fiance, she's an equine uh, horse vet doctor. So she's, okay. she has a very stressful career, you know, saving or losing lives. And um, she does not sleep deep. Like she gets up at four o'clock in the morning. So this was one of my phase one approaches. It wasn't just for my benefit. I was like, if I can improve her sleep, a, a few percentage points just by shutting the Wi-Fi down. Uh, yeah. It, perfect. And then obviously I got her some blue blocking glasses. She still sort of embraces it, sort of doesn't. Uh, <laughs> she actually won't wear the hundred percents because it ruins her vision on the TV because she's got poor eyesight. And I was like, you know, what could fix the poor oh, yeah. eyesight. She's like, what? I was like, going to the eye doctor. <laughs> but she doesn't do either. Um, so I at least got her wearing a 50% uh, block. It's yeah. been nothing. Um, again, listeners don't play with an iPad right before bed while watching television. I mean, I still try and get her to shut that all down, but you know, anyway, she doesn't listen to this show. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, building biologists often refer to nature, right? And mm -hmm. you should, we should, we evolved in nature. We evolved under sunlight and, you know, while it is convenient to have light bulbs that we can turn on at midnight or whatever, it is not natural to have light come on at midnight. And we have photoreceptors in our eyes, but we also have photoreceptors in our skin. So I love Matt Maruka Raw Optics. I think that blue blockers are an important component to healthy lighting, but they're not the end all be all because oh our God, skin no. is still not protected. Tip so we of have the iceberg. To, yeah, yeah. So you really have to pay attention and I, I, I don't want to tell people to change their lifestyle at all, but you know, if you can, if you can watch your shows during the day, if you watch your shows while the light is still out or at least early in the evening and then shut it down a couple hours before bed, that's going to do you way more good than, you know, hopping on Facebook right before bed and to check your feed. I mean, it, it, it's just as close to nature as you can get as possible is going to be the healthiest that you can be. Well, the, the interesting thing is, so back to your little 
slip in there about the power meters and the frequencies and you had a cell phone tower near your house because that's something that Jack and I talked about too was listen it's like at least try and control what is happening within the walls of your own home yes because uh you can't control the fact that cell phone towers broadcast 24 7 so we're never gonna be able to do anything about that for the most part unless you get really hardcore geeked out and start you know layering your house and all this material that can block that stuff. And I was looking at that on his website actually the other day. Um, because to your point now, we've just talked about the electric meter. I'm like, huh. So that makes me think I want to take off the siding around that and put like a blocking sheet layer in and then put the siding back on because then at least where the power meters mounted, it can't broadcast straight through the wall into my house anymore. Is that something that you, is that a tip? I don't know. It, it is. The only, the only uh, I guess, side note I would say with any sort of shielding is you really want to test it. So you can do more damage than you do good. Um, and it's really, really hard to know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to know unless you have a meter. So a lot of smart commercial smart meter guards that you'll buy are basically like a, I don't even know what you call it, just like a cup that sits over the thing, which does force more stuff into your house, like you just said. And yeah. so blocking in theory i would think that blocking it from behind would be the right. best thing where it's That's mounted, what where it's mounted exactly exactly, exactly. That, way, but, that way it can keep broadcasting away from the house for those electric people but it's exactly. not going 360 degrees back into the house exactly the only thing I, like i said just it's a good what idea always test so you can get meters that are really expensive but traditionally people recommend a cornet meter it's about 170 dollars. you can get it on Amazon um, and it, well, I want to show it to the video watchers. So I was going to bring up so it's called a cornet meter Yeah, and I wish I'm so sorry. I don't have the model number with me because it's I have cool. a, a different oh, one um, Let's but, do some uh, screen sharing. I, I'm just gonna use Google images and just bring yeah. up pictures So is this some of that tech yeah. you're talking about? Yep, exactly it. Okay. Yeah, and so that guy is gonna cost you less than $200 on Amazon and um, Will help you just with all of your things. It'll help you find if if your um, neighbor's Wi-Fi is affecting you, and if you can shield that, it'll help you just find all the hidden sources in your house. And Scott, you're going to be surprised at everything that is broadcasting in your home. Because it's we, not we've actually just did this, actually. Um, I was, let me stop sharing here for a second. Again, Cornet, C-O-R-N-E-T, ladies and gentlemen. And actually, I'll link this stuff on the, on the, on the like we always do. We always link everything in the show notes on the website So for this episode. But uh, a buddy of mine came over because I was having internet performance issues, like with the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And this house, because it's so old, they wrapped it in metal siding. So here okay. was something fun. He didn't have that thing, but he mm -hmm. had some type of software on his iPad because he's, he's, a, he's like a security engineer. Like banks hire him to hack them. Like, oh. So he works like six months out of the year, maybe three months, and then he's done because it's a very specialty job. Uh, yeah. So, he goes into New York City, they pay him for a few months to hack them, help them improve their security protocols, and then he's done. So he has some kind of cool stuff that he could just drive up with this Pringle looking can and scan your house and then hack into your network if he wanted to. It's so cool. Wow. <laughs> right? Well, that's another reason to be hardwired. So people like him can't do that to you. <laughs> well, so we I was like, dude, why is it my Wi-Fi? It, it felt like it kept getting walked on. And he's like, Oh yeah, because your house is basically a homing beacon. We figured out, he walked out and just touched the metal siding while he was scanning and everything went off the freaking charts. So my metal siding draws Wi-Fi signals in. So I had to, we had to basically make sure we found the perfect channel within the router to make sure that I wasn't similar to the other routers, right? Yeah. Then I was like, so why, and here's the other best part. My cell phone signal sucks at the house. So here was one, yeah. one positive I want to hear your feedback on. So our Wi-Fi, it's drawing it in. But here's the interesting thing, because it, your cell phone signal is on a different frequency and a different spectrum. This siding actually helps by preventing penetration of the cell phone tower signals. So I guess there's yeah. a 50-50, like, okay, great. I'm not getting, I'm getting too much Wi-Fi, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I, I'm not getting all the cell phone bombardment on our, you know, our brains and everything else. So. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's crazy. And, and speaking of metal, so you know, if you think about what an antenna is, it's, it's a piece of metal, it, just like your mattress springs. So your mattress actually mm. acts as a perfect antenna for, you know, FM radio, for Wi-Fi, for all of these things. And so uh, another tip is 
when you're replacing your mattress, which you should do every 10 years anyways, you should replace it for one with one that doesn't have metal springs for that exact reason. We, we like reason. Uh, memory foam and all that stuff. So yeah. 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 So memory foam is good. It's good. Better is going to be like but natural there's chemicals latex. In there. There's a lot of chemicals in memory foam. Um, and so natural latex is sort of the, the, the natural memory foam that has none of those chemicals in it. Oh, well, interesting. Cause we're going to be looking for a new one here in this year. So uh, we were using my, when I moved in, I took, I had a better bed than her, moved everything in, got rid of the old yeah. bed, moved mine in, but it's like, okay. And then we'd be using the whole memory foam topper. And I was like, listen, yeah. we got to find like the perfect next bed, you know, cause we're getting yeah. married. We're getting married in March. I was like, I think we could finally. Like, so, yeah. Um, so you're <laughs> no saying there's, there's, there's natural latex you're saying or yeah, natural latex. Mm. Um, and it's, it feels a lot like memory foam. It's that squishy feel. Um, but it's com completely natural. It's not made of petroleum. Like, uh, like a memory foam is they actually call that, that foam that they make memory foam pillows and stuff out of, um, and you might know this in the firefighting and in insurance industries, they call it solid gasoline because it is so incredibly flammable. And mm -hmm. so the amount of chemicals that they have to put on it to retard the flames to make it pass, um, you know, the, the standards of mattresses and pillows is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's, it's a chemical cocktail. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. They say that in a bed, you have more petroleum chemicals than in a barrel of crude oil. Can you think about that? Whoa. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then that. we put our babies, you know, face down on these mattresses and, yeah. you know, we wonder. We wonder so what when, when did you learn about the mattress stuff? Was that while you started going through all this curriculum and digging into the biology component? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I think that's the bigger thing on this episode that I'd like to get deeper into too. I think you're going to be able to wrap easily about is that, you know, we, we're talking about, obviously we love Jack Cruz. We're talking about the frequencies and this is totally proven by the way that we are not making this stuff up. Um, but now we kind of like eased into this chemical component with the mattresses. So I love this natural latex mattresses. Is there, you don't, I, you're probably not sponsored. I don't know if you are, but is there like a recommended brand that people can start poking around and looking at them? Do you know? I would love to give you that. And I will be able to give it to you soon because we're actually mattress shopping right now. So wow. I have been on the phone with different companies and I, I'm working on a, a big comprehensive post right now where I get all my questions answered. I want to know. You know oh, you're going to go through like a whole bunch of brands? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so you'll find it soon on wholesomehouses.com, but I, I don't want to give you a recommendation before I've really done my due diligence on it. Well, and look, real quick on that. So let's pause on that. So back to the site. Um, is that the kind of content that most people will find here I'll do some screen sharing again is you actually have some strategies on here. You got your, some, uh, hazard awareness. You have, have here's your discount component. So is that part of your goal of this site too, is to get as much of that knowledge that you're learning out there in like a blog type format? Exactly. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I just want to share what I'm learning. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm nervous to be here. I'm still a student. I'm still learning, but to me, it feels selfish to keep this information to myself because there are so many things that I'm like, are you kidding? Let me give you a really quick example because safety is one of the things that we talk about. You know, in a healthy home, it, it doesn't matter if you buy a $7,000 organic latex mattress. If you don't have a fire extinguisher and there's a fire in your house, you know what I mean? So we're talking about safety and maintenance first. And one really interesting thing about safety that I blew my mind when I learned it is that there are two kinds of smoke detectors. Now you may know this, Scott, with your background in firefighting, but there is a photoelectric type, which uses, yes, right. which uses light to determine if there's smoke in the air. Yes. And the other is an ionizing detector. Well done. Which uses well done. Radiation to tell if you have smoke in the air. Yes. So, um, you know, building biologists often refer to the precautionary principle, which is, you know, in the absence of all of the answers, all of the scientific data and a hundred percent certainty, we're going to err on the side of caution. So to me, when I hear one uses light and one uses radiation, it's a pretty simple choice to me, which one seems like it's going to be safer for my family. Mm -hmm. And they say it doesn't, they say it doesn't leave at all. So, you know, I do want to, I do want to make that clear the there are alpha particles that come off of this radiation that can't leave the plastic casing and so you know in theory you're not necessarily sleeping right under like radioactive particles falling no, on you but no. still um you know to me the difference between using light and radiation and disposing of light and radiation is 
is a big difference. And the bigger difference is when they did studies in how effective these two, these two devices were in determining um, the presence of fire and smoke. Um, ionizing detectors uh, detected the presence of a smoldering fire some 20 minutes slower yes. than, than a photoelectric. And so it, not only <laughs> does it possibly have dangerous materials in it, it's not as effective as, as keeping your family safe. And so to me, um, I, I was just shocked because I have literally never thought twice about a smoke detector. When it dings, I buy what's cheapest on Amazon, I put it up, like, and it, it blew my mind when I learned that this is a, an important, like, potentially life-saving decision. Well, what you just brought up is more known in the commercial space. So uh, one of my biggest clients is in the HVAC industry. And yeah. one of the companies that I help her represent is a company called by the name of Air Products, aka Apollo. And they are the one of the only two manufacturers in the world that make induct smoke detection devices for fire life safety, meaning it's a duct sensor that you mount in the duct work on a commercial property because as the okay. air is passing through, its job yeah. is it has sampling tubes mounted into the duct work and then the unit is sitting on the outside of the duct work and its job is sit there and as the air is passing through, it's sampling. Okay. Well, there's photoelectric and there's ionization. Photoelectric is the most common. Ionization uh, is usually especially being spe specified by the engineers or fire experts involving environments around kitchens and things of that nature because there's different uh, flammable materials. You have right. grease fires and everything else. Like uh, to your point, not every fire is a rip roaring explosive fire. You know where you just right. have flame and everything else. You have the the risk of uh, the air risk, for example, of that radiating particles coming off of a smoldering fire, for example. So sure. there is different sampling requirements depending on the fire code. So, yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I didn't, I did not know that. And yeah, we're that's... geeking out, man, geeking out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I knew, I knew if I brought up fire, I'd learn something interesting. So that's good. That's great. Yeah, and that's 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 like. East Coast, like now that I'm back here, that, that has nothing to do with wildland when I was in the wilderness because like, you don't need a smoke detector. We just breathe. We just breathe. <laughs> so people are like, you didn't have air masks? I'm like, how do you hike with an air tank and an air mask into the mountains? It wasn't wow. happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just breathe it all. Not, not good for but you. To, either, no, no, not, not at all. But to go back to what you were saying um, uh, on wholesome houses. So yeah, we're going to talk about safety and maintenance. We do talk about lighting and lighting design. Um, and I don't want to harp on that too much because you, you've had guests that have done that very well, but it is critically important. I mean, light is basically everything when it comes to health. And I'm convinced of this. Um, and so inside you really want to mimic nature as much as possible. So just a quick tip on that um, is anytime that you're on your computer or your cell phone, if you can have your computer set up next to a window, you're going to be doing yourself a better favor because you're letting in those reds. Or if you see how my arm is all lit up right now? <laughs> yeah, it might too. There's, there's a big window right there. <laughs> that's that, yeah, an, that's yeah. that antique window right next to my standing desk. So yeah. there is no excuse for proper lighting. So Yes. And if you can't, if you can't make that work, then what you can do, let me see if I can grab it here. I actually happen to have it here, is get one of these guys. This is just a party bulb. You can get it from party city, Amazon, wherever. Because of the red um, spectrum? Yes. So you're going to balance your blues with red. So just put so this in a light. So showing you a red bulb. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just an incandescent bulb and you can just um, put that on your desk in a lamp and that'll also help balance the blues and, and tone it down just a little bit. I was going to say, I think the last live podcast I saw with Jack, he was in a group of like four or five people. They were all sitting in a lounge and it was all red lighting. It might've been yeah. Jack's, it might've been Jack Jack's center. I don't even know. Um, but so real quick on the bulbs, I yeah. personally could care less about LED electric efficiency, lower bills. I moved all the bulbs back to incandescent. Yes. I find that the lighting is more natural. Like when I, when I tried moving them over that years ago, you drive by at night, it looks like your house is possessed by ghosts. Like it's like yes, it does. white glowing. And then everybody's like, oh, well, why don't you just buy that? the natural look LED bulb. I'm like, no, because you're still getting the LED frequencies off of that technology as well. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really noticed a bulb lasting that much longer because it's LED. So what's your, yeah. what's your tips on the LED versus the incandescent? Yeah, so for, for sure, you're headed the right direction. Incandescent is gonna be your best choice. So um, I, I say this with a little asterisk that says, 
sunlight is always best. So when I tell okay. you to get incandescent, that doesn't mean that now you don't need any sunlight. Now you don't need to open your windows. It's not at all what I'm saying. But when it comes to your choice of lighting in your home, those curly cues, the CFL bulbs, get them out of your house, please. Yes get them out of your house. They have mercury vapor in them. If they break, you need to evacuate the room and call a hazmat team. I mean, it's terrible for but you. People don't do that. Those, those bulbs break. No, Nobody's no. told to evacuate the room. I, I know. Well, there, you know, there's a little information on the back that tells yeah, you what nobody's do, reading that. nobody pays attention to that. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, and, and so I tell my kids, it's as important as stop, drop and roll to me. If my kids ever see one of those break, you don't walk, you run. Yeah. out of the room. I mean, it well, is because mercury is a heavy metal and th that's yeah. one of those heavy toxic metals that it could get into your body and never actually leave. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of people who suffer from heavy metals issues and you got to go through some very advanced treatments to get your body to be able to grab a hold of those heavy metals and find a way to excrete them out of the body. And there is other, that's a whole other podcast. But <laughs> yeah. Well, and Dr. Cruz talks about something called the mercury resonance, where when you're under CFLs or the long tube fluorescence, which is all that you have in a, in a Walmart or a Home Depot. I mean, every time you go to a big, big box store, you are only standing under fluorescent or, lighting. Uh, I'm a big CrossFitter. Almost, most CrossFit gyms exactly. all using the tubular long bulbs. So Exactly. Those all have mercury in them. And Dr. Cruz talks about what's called the mercury resonance, where the mercury like in your fillings or whatever actually um, reacts with that mercury and causes like it to release mercury out of your teeth. So it's like... It, wow. Everything about it is scary and dangerous. And like you said, I would 100% recommend you switching out all your bulbs away from LED, away from CFL, and back to just the traditional incandescent bulbs. What we just used to call light bulbs. And um, you can find them almost anywhere. It, they are getting harder to find. It's, it's harder to find. But yeah. if you go to a big box store, you can almost always find them. You just look on yeah, the bottom they, shelf like, where they don't, want you want, they don't want you shopping there. It's on the bottom. I just you went to a Lowe's and they have like this whole aisle of lighting. And then I had to find like there's like two slots and like yep. one shelf that actually had incandescent options. It took me yes. twice as long to find them. Cause then I, no, I, I asked the person like, Oh, well, you know, well here, here's like the real looking light ones. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want your real bulb. That's still <laughs> the new tech. I want a classic. I want, I want that little filament that breaks really easy. Yeah. That's yes. what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they look at you like you're crazy, but you know, this is, this is another example of, you know, but, Building biology and, and building like for the environment, green building, eco-friendly building, yeah. they leads, are leads very somebody. similar. Yes, they're very similar. They run parallel almost all the time. But there's a couple of times, especially when it comes to things like energy efficient light bulbs, where, you know, building for the environment is going to take a very different path than building for human biology. Um, and, and this is one of those examples that... Um, so with, with, yeah. with these examples that we're giving to you, I want to make sure we also pause too, is that... We're not trying to do like fear mongering here. We're, we're really all. trying to bring a lot. We're clearly both passionate about health. And so when people hear this, I, it's not a matter of freaking you out and having you second guess everything in your home. This is just like with nutrition or with sleep best practices or fitness best practices. It's, we're trying to create awareness. And then you take the time when you see fit to start implementing these things as you see fit in your life, hopefully sooner than later. I mean, how sure. do you, I mean, that's my explanation, right? To help battle the fear mongering. How would you, how do you explain this to people when they see you get all passionate about this? <laughs> Same <laughs> way. Same way. You know, okay. I have personally, I remember what it was when I found out that there was lead in crock pots. I was like, I get up. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was like the thing that I was like, I can't take it anymore. Um, and so I definitely have been there where it just feels like everything seems to be conspiring against our health. But, but since then, I've taken a step back and realized that any change is better than no change. You know what I mean? And these small steps, 100% add up to big changes. And you're going to replace your light bulb anyways. I'm not saying go in and change everything about your home. But the next time that you need to buy light bulbs, just remember this podcast. Yeah. Go look at the bottom shelf and get you an incandescent. But you know, you know what's really annoying about the bulb changing is when the, when the curly cues came out. Yeah. How many people do we know? I was guilty of it uh, in an old place before I didn't like them. But you buy the big box because there were like a special promo like, oh, new energy efficient. You buy eight bulbs. And then even though you had to change one bulb, you went and changed <laughs> them all in the house because you think <laughs> the electric bill like, oh, well, 
I know these bulbs still work, but I'm just going to go ahead and change them all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I ask people, like, if you're going to do that, let's do that with the incandescence, okay? If you're going to yeah. go and just, if you like to do the bulk update, let's bulk update and go in reverse. Let's go back to the prior tech. It was better, actually. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and um, yeah, and it's, it's the same with everything, you know? It, it's, I'm not saying that the internet and Wi-Fi are bad, but when it comes to EMF, so many things in our home are, are broadcasting these signals your your wireless printer is constantly searching for a print job how often do you print once every I, two or three days we had to and shut so, mine down by the way that's really hard to turn off the onboard wi-fi because that was something else when my buddy was here we found out that my own wi-fi printer was walking on the primary wi-fi router and interfering with it i didn't even yeah. think about it so we had yeah. it took us forever to figure out how to shut that thing down because then again, I just put that thing on the hardwired network. And as long as you're on the network, you'll still find the printer. But now there's yes. no Wi-Fi coming out of this printer at all. Yes. You know, yes. So. And, that's, and, and most people don't ever think about that. Or their um, cordless phones. If you have a 2.4 gigahertz cordless phone, it can create more microwave radiation than your cell phone. And people Courtney, think, all the new oh, wireless God. tech. We got to have gigahertz everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, that's what everybody's uh, selling. <laughs> I know, I know. And so like all of these things, I feel like if we can just, you know, not, not go back to the stone ages, but just take a step back and think, you know, is the convenience necessarily worth it? You know, and just take a hard, honest look at, at what it is that we need and, and if it's worth it. The biggest issue that I've, I've learned, uh, well, I bring to the table is not being a, a building biologist like you, is that I'm the sales and marketing professional, you know, when I wasn't firefighting and, and what I do now. So the one thing I remind people is that a lot of the, there's actually been a lot of in the marketing and advertising techniques, they use subliminal fear mongering in that to push you to the new technology or yeah. the new diet or this new thing. And to your point, the thing that I try and remind people at, because I'm like, Hey, it's really good marketing because that's why I study it. I'm like, they know what they're doing. That's why they make a lot of money. But yeah. that's the most thing I try and bring awareness to people too, is that you're being really well sold. Take a uh, shout out to Mel Robbins of the five second rule book. Like take the five okay. seconds to just pause one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, do I still need to make that impulse buy? Right. And then think right. about like to your saying, it's like, well, that is new tech. So how long has the tech been around? We don't know the health implications of the new tech. Not at all. So two things I want to say about that. One about the, the sort of subliminal marketing. Um, everything that has smart in the title leads you to think what, right? It's, it's, better. it's not just smart that it can communicate, but you know, you're know you smart for buying it, right? And the, the, the reality could not be any further from the truth. If you have anything smart in your home, it would probably be smartest to get rid of it. That means that it is constantly trying to connect. It is, it is bombarding you with this EMF that we're talking about. Basic you to avoid. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi does never, never shuts down. It is always yeah. transmitting and receiving. Always. Right. And it's everything now. It's your smart meter. It's your smart lights. It's your smart speakers. There. I mean, it's smart everything. And that, that to me, I feel like there needs to be another acronym that that doesn't that doesn't teach people that this is okay because it's not a smart choice. Well, the funny thing is I could swap smart with, if I was trying to get people to go not old school, but to a wired option is smart is not high performance. You can't beat a well wired stereo yeah. system. You have, not at all. you buy these really good buy. Like there's, there's, there's a, there's a speaker company that makes wires, just the wires that, that plug your st speaker into the system that are yeah. thousands of dollars. It's like, if you're like crazy obsessed with stereos, you can go crazy high end. But again, yeah. passing a signal through a properly insulated and jacketed cable is still going to give off a frequency, but nothing like wireless tech. So right. granted, I have a buddy of mine. He just, I have a smart door locks and deadbolts and all this other stuff. My argument to him, I'm like, great. I'll bring my buddy over who's the hacker and he'll hack your whole house. <laughs> I exactly. Like, Me? I still need to put a physical key into my deadbolt. I'm yes. cool. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, the privacy aspects uh, um, and security aspects are major too. But, but like you said, connectivity, your wired connection 
will be faster than your My internet's wireless. better wired. My computer, this, that's why I went back to hard wiring too, was for podcasting. Because yeah. I streamed so much video and everything else, I wanted to ensure that I removed any performance issues. That's why I went back to hardwired as well, not just for the health benefits. I know that a hardwired connection is faster. You can't, yeah. you can't push the same speed and efficiency over the air as you can through a physical cable. It's just not no. possible. So, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, so if we could, I would like to jump into um, another aspect that building biologists talk about Where are we going? What we got next? Let's do it. So we call it the sleep sanctuary, and it is because our bedrooms are where we do the majority of our resting and recovery. This is where we get rid of cellular waste. This is, I mean, this is the most important part of the day. And um, having a, a bedroom that supports that which most people's bedrooms do not is incredibly important. So I wanted to just give a couple of tips there. And I know we talked about the mattress a little bit already, but for people again, who feel like ah, I can, I can't get a new mattress right now. I don't need another thing. Let me I go blackout drapes is phase one. So important. Yeah. So important. A completely dark room is very important and, and electrically quiet. So um, if you are using your cell phone as an alarm clock, put it in the bathroom, put it in the hallway, get it as far away from your head as possible. Still, still working on that. My fiance, when she's on call, she justifies it. I'm on call. I need the phone right here. I'm like, if you got an emergency call in the night, aren't you going to get up anyway? Out of respect yeah. for, out of respect for my sleep, you have to get up and take the phone call. I don't want to hear you talking to your answering service in the middle of the night. Sure. So, yeah. Like, just put it just in the living room. Like put it right there, put it right there outside the door. Just get a few more feet away from your head. So. Exactly. Yeah. Anything that's plugged into the wall, if you can have it unplugged while you sleep or better yet, like we talked about, just cut that breaker completely to the bedroom. That is going to be probably the best sleep that you can get. That is probably the most also, advanced step is people installing a kind of like a light switch circuit breaker. Is that the best way to put it? I guess. Yeah. It's called, it's called a kill switch and it, yeah, it just, it only affects the break or the, the, uh, oh my goodness, the whatever's on that electrical circuit. wires. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that room. And so um, that's definitely ideal, but anybody can do this. You don't have to have an electrician. You just need to go figure out where, where the breaker to your room is. And you can just go to the breaker box every day. Well, not in our house because it's so old. There's a circuit breaker just for the outlets and there's a circuit breaker for the lights. So I'd yeah. have to kill two circuits, but who cares if you're sleeping? And when you wake up, you're waking up at sunrise if you're healthy. So why do you need lights or electric outlets right. in that bedroom? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, so that is definitely a good tip. And and just anything that you can unplug. Your your if you have a TV, which you know, nope, is a pet peeve bedroom. of mine. But if you have a TV in your room and it is a newer TV, it is broadcasting. It is hitting you nonstop because it's a smart it. TV. The yes. smart TV has its own onboard <laughs> Wi-Fi. It's so smart. It's so, yeah. so smart. <laughs> um, so, that, so again, make sure, just make it as electrically quiet as possible. Pass that, like you said, as dark as possible. That might mean anything that you do have to keep plugged in, covering those little indicator lights. Now, I know this might drive you crazy, but, you know, uh, smoke, smoke uh, alarms have the little flash to show you that they're working. That thing drives me crazy. I and have, so I have black electrical I cover paper. those. Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. So I cover everything in my room and just try to make it as dark as possible. Um, the other thing is going to be the temperature. So our bodies actually cool down a little bit at night. And so if you can program your thermostat to be in the 65 ish range at night, which is a little bit cool for most people, that's going to allow you to sleep better as well. I love a cold sleeping environment because that's why you get like a nice comforter or whatever. You want to burrow into that bed and have that. I mean, now, nowadays they got those weighted blankets to make you feel mm -hmm. even more like contained and people yeah. apparently are claiming amazing sleep from them. So, but uh, I don't know what that stuff is made out of though. <laughs> you don't yeah, talk about um, these heavy blankets. You know I do. I've only heard about them for autism. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I don't, don't know what oh, those other people just regularly <laughs> buying them now. They want to feel that, contained and like womb womb like feel i guess i don't know i it, okay i agree with you they originally were invented to help with autism so yeah yeah hmm. um so again if you're not ready to buy a new mattress i would suggest that you put like an allergen proof um or waterproof 
zippable uh, cover on it. And that's going to hopefully keep some of those toxic flame retardant buried inside of there. And then you can just get a mattress pad, a cotton organic mattress pad, put that on top, put uh, cotton sheets on top. Try your very best not to get any of the wrinkle proof, stain proof, any of that. If, if there's any sort of marketing we on the front a of the package, we gave up on stains a long time ago. <laughs> we try not to get it. Just get a, a regular cotton, hemp, jute, linen, anything that's um, a man made material uh, and use that instead because, again, your bed is where you spend. 30% of your life, 30% of your life. This is major. The last thing um, that I would suggest here, and this is something that we're going to have to do because we've just moved into a townhome is if you live um, in a multifamily um, building or around other people's Wi-Fi signals that you just can't control, I would highly recommend something like um, an EMF shielding canopy. These are really great. Um, they just go over your bed and literally um, attenuate any of the incoming signals that you, you can't block from, from within your own control. Well, yeah, so an EMF canopy is kind of like a spin off of like if you ever stayed in a third world country in a jungle high humidity valley they had those like those bug nets like bug nets yeah. right it but looks just a like specific, a, a specific fabric to help block the emf yeah yeah exactly that's exactly what it looks like and um i guess when you call it bug netting <laughs> it's so not as glamorous to me when i think of canopies it just seems so romantic and you know sheer and beautiful and i, I like the feel of it um but oh, yeah, you can make them look elegant i mean if you have one uh, of those canopy style framed beds right exactly all you gotta do is attach the the, the material to the support system and canopy, yep. canopy beds have a very elegant and royal look to them. So Exactly. Yeah. And so that's a good way if you're unable to control what's going on, even if you've shut your own breakers down, if you can't control what's in your environment to, to do that. There's another as well. Amazon. There you go. Yep, so they're, exactly. they're, showing, they're showing with a nice canopy bed, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just, it just looks like club fabric. That's all. Yep. Or actually it's like not netting, but it's like a trance. You could see through it. It's like a mesh. Yeah. yeah like a mesh. Yeah, and this is actually, it says, it actually it's marked as a cell tower, Wi-Fi radiation protective natural box canopy. <laughs> yep. It's a very long explanation. But wow, the, that's the, really expensive though. This that's, that's what I was just about to say. The fabric itself oh. is incredibly expensive. So it doesn't matter if you can sew and you want to make it yourself or if you're going to buy it on Amazon. It It's a little bit pricey, um, but it, again, you know, this is, you're spending so much of your life here in this bed. And this is one of the, the best investments in my opinion that you can make in terms of protecting yourself from. That's what it's a Faraday. That's right. I remember that name now. I was trying to find yeah. the, the fancy word for it. Faraday has to do with all the frequencies and stuff. So yep. that's because they, they're calling it a Faraday campy or Faraday EMF shielding. Um, well, yeah, to your point, wow, you can get stuff for a few hundred bucks if you're willing to make your own modification. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you can buy the fabric and, and sew it yourself, and you, you definitely will save a couple hundred dollars, but um, like I said, the, the, the material itself is impregnated with it, different things, but usually some type of metal that's going to attenuate that. Well, silver is one of it. Fabric. Yeah. Like silver is yeah. a great uh, component for that. Silver is actually very healthy for you, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, anything metal. In fact, I, I'd like to go back real fast and tell you something that Dr. Cruz does in his bedroom that I thought, at first I was like, what? And then I was like, that's kind of genius. So he um, went to a reclaim shop and found old barn wood that was painted with lead-based paint. And he bought it all up. <laughs> and he sealed it so that the lead couldn't chip off. But then he hung it on his, like this, he hung it right behind his bed. And it's because that lead does the same thing that this canopy does. It works as a very good oh. blocker of all of these signals. So... So if you have really painted over your lead paint multiple times over, it's still in there. So you may, all, old construction, you actually may have some good shielding around you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I don't want to make a big statement. Like, like, it's a, like it's a great thing. And I would definitely caution you if you have children, like that stuff chips off and it, it can be terrible. No, you better, but, you better hope you got a lot of layers over top of that stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. But with any type of metal, it's, it's, it's the same theory. It's going to help kind of protect you from those, those ambient signals. Awesome. Wow, this yeah. has been a very informative episode. I'm loving this. Like, it's great. I always love stumbling across another uh, Jack follower or like, like Matt Maruka and, and uh, yeah. uh, 
Kevin Cottrell and actually Kevin Cottrell was still my top five most downloaded because Kevin came on first and Jack shared that episode and that blew that one. Okay. And then Jack finally came on. Actually, I, I told Matt, we got to get Jack back on because we got to do some updated stuff. I'm going to catch up with him and see what he's been up to these days. So Yeah. And you know, I, and I don't want to hop into it because it's definitely his wheelhouse, but you got to get him talking about 5G. I mean, this is so timely and he is I agree. one I agree. of the foremost experts on it. So well, it's, um, it's the same thing on much. the whole gigahertz phones and everything else. I'm like, the only thing you're being sold in the marketing is, oh, you have to go 5G because it's better. Like, why is yeah. it better? Like, yeah. Like my router does work with 5G and three or two or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, because then the Apple devices prefer 5G. So they'll hop onto that frequency. And I'm like, or I just hardwire everything. And then yeah. during the day, the only Wi-Fi that's being soaked up is by the iPhones. Because we do, I do need the Wi-Fi because my fiance's business and my business, I got to get a phone call in the house. So we have Wi-Fi right. assisted calling enabled on the, on the smartphone. And that's because, again, my, my house is blocking a lot of the cell phone signals. So yeah. um, thankfully, there is technology that can use that. But again, back to our point, it doesn't mean we need that in the middle of the night. <laughs> right. No, not at all. And it's, um, it's a completely untested technology. And, you know, we're already so bombarded with these signals before 5G that um, I, I, I can't even imagine what's going to happen when it's rolled out nationwide. I, so. I've always supported the... Uh, uh, the the a lot of everybody's been back and forth on the electric companies and their and their high voltage towers and you know and these cancer clusters and everything else and I'm like yeah. uh, you can they can afford to keep pushing different studies against what these poor families have suffered from I don't care what you say it, I studied microelectronics technology in high school I know there's frequencies that come off of this because I used to work with this big piece of equipment called an oscilloscope and I would just take two test leads and touch stuff. And you see yeah. sine waves pulsing. It looks like you're from yeah. like a Frankenstein movie. And I'm like, don't tell me everything's got a frequency. If there's electrical oh. current, whether even if it's a battery power, there is some type of frequency being processed. Now, granted, some are more extreme than others. So sure. Sure. my alarm well, clock is a battery powered alarm clock. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that you said that. A hundred percent. If oh, you school. have to have it by you. Yes. Please use a battery. It's not operator. fancy at all. It's just it's a it's like a bamboo wood. It's actually really nice and simple. I just got to remember yeah. to change the batteries, but yeah. yeah. Well, and I've never had an I've never even heard of an oscilloscope, but uh, I did do a, a face an interesting Facebook live video where I took a fluorescent uh, light bulb and stood under a high tension power line and lit that thing up just standing really? under the high tension high tension power line, and you know people have their their houses built under this, schools built under this, hospitals built under this, and and think that it's not affecting them. And like you said, uh, it affects everything. Well, I never thought about doing that. And actually, real quick, just to geek out a little bit, I will uh, I will show you what in a silly, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to go back to my high school days, I was this kind of <laughs> I was this kind of geek. So yeah, that's what I used to play with. <laughs> oh wow. So yeah, there's all kinds of knobs and buttons and yada, yada, yada. And there's different cables you hook up and you test things. Like, actually, this is a newer one because this has got a USB port on it. USB oh, yeah. did not exist in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I studied this before .com. So uh, I'm wow. aging myself because I'm 41. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it, that's, that's the awesome. point. It's like, and back then I studied uh, DC, DC technology, DC voltage, which is your batteries. AC, which is like your, your house, uh, yes. uh, digital technology and microprocessor technology. So that's, that was my high school years. So, wow. I, my high school years were nothing like that. <laughs> we'll leave that for a different podcast. Hey, a lot of people were doing college prep. I, I went to a technology <laughs> school and geeked out. So yeah, that's awesome. but it's cool yeah. to see all this stuff kind of come full circle and tie back in. Like, I don't, 100%. I don't think I've ever brought up an oscillos. I haven't said that word oscilloscope in years, but it's still in my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Well, so, so listen, uh, we got to bring the show to a close, but you've okay. been dropping some serious bombs. I love the knowledge. Uh, I'm going to try and get everything linked that we always do on the website uh, as far as for the episode. We'll obviously have all your profiles linked. Again, ladies and gentlemen, again, it's wholesomehouses.com. Uh, she's got a lot more going on here than what we talked about today, but you are the guest co-host, so you get to help close out the show. Is there some all-encompassing message or your legacy mission statement that you're trying to do in the world right now that you want to leave us behind with? Yeah, I guess the, the thing, when we kind of touched on it a little bit before, but, 
It's just that everything that you do to improve your health at home is going to help. Please don't get overwhelmed by this conversation. Please don't get freaked out and let perfect be the enemy of better. Um, and, and just take some simple steps, educate yourself, and, and make your home a healthier place for you and your family. There we go. All right. Well, Hank Taylor, let me get a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't learned some great ideas to get healthy and wholesome in your house today, uh, clearly you were not listening. So <laughs> again, go check out wholesome, wholesomehouses.com. And she's got a lot of knowledge to share. I, I can't wait till she finishes her, her uh, building biology degree. We got to get her back on and see what's more advancements in her brain she acquires because she's already sharing a lot with us today. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we've said it before, we're here to fuel your health, your business, your lifestyle. Actually, every single thing she shared today applies to your home health and your business health and obviously your overall lifestyle. So we nailed it on all domains today. So again, wholesomehouses.com. Uh, everything we talked about today, including some of these cool little products, I'm going to get them linked in the show notes. So you can go poke around and check them out and do your own self-study. Uh, but again, don't forget to share. Don't forget to rate. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. Remember, you too could live the fuel.